little there's a little tumble right there. A little tumble but we'll continue. But I'm sure the this shift is gonna be much more dramatic than even and, and maybe surprising than even that was for us just now. You know, you always, but let's just go through this a little bit more right here. This will be probably be the third part of this, speaking about Africa's the polar shift and also the word of of God, the God and Father, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, revealed to us here in Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1. And just to quickly recap, it says that, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And as we move it forward, it's, it's speaking for the reasons why, the pollution of the earth. There's a verse in Revelation that says, and now destroy those who destroy the earth. It's an interesting consideration with some of the present subject matters about pollution, about global pollution and corruption and bloodshed and violence and the so-called changing moralities and so forth and so on, the so-called new normal. Well, the Almighty says he's going to turn the earth upside down. And the new wine, he says, mourneth, and the vine languisheth. All the merry heart do sigh. You understand? And notice how this particular New Year's was a Christmas, I mean, was a, um, was a what do they call it, Sunday. It was a Sunday. That means actually it occurred at the end of a Sabbath and the beginning of a new, a new day. So that's even significant as well that New Year's occurred at the end of the Shabbat this year, 20, 2012, leading into 2012, and the beginning of a first day. So we have at the end of the seventh day, and then we have the beginning of the first day or the sun day. Now, make sure you note the significance of the sun here in our demonstration right here and the position of the Horn of Africa. And now we have proof positive of what a 40-degree polar shift can do, you understand, to the earth, but in particular, you understand how dramatic this effect will be, once again, let's rewind this again, will be on the continent of Africa, the Horn of Africa right there, the Red Sea right there, so Ethiopia right there, notice the whole position. Now, this does not compensate for flooding tables, for new mountains that are emerging, new land masses, as we see already this the case in the in the Red Sea. In the Red Sea there's a new island that is that they say has emerged in the Red Sea between Yemen and North North Ethiopia called Eritrea, right around this particular point right here. A new land mass from this active volcanoes in this particular region. You understand? So a lot of volcanoes, even in the Ethiopia, Africa region, is active. You understand? But we can see a new island emerging here in Ethiopia now, returning, in a sense, to a northern position. You see, there's an Ethiopia in what mortal men and people call mythology. There's the Ethiopia of mythology, and Gerald Macy, and especially his book one, in particular the book one, but throughout his Egyptology, um, the three major volumes of Egyptology that um, Gerald Macy, brother Gerald Macy, did, he pointed to the origins being in Africa, to uh, Egypt being the mouthpiece for this inner Africa and the true cookie cutter or code breaker for the, the Hebraic, the, the, the whole Hebraic um, um, mythology, some would say, but the whole Bible code and, and of Christianity, he repoints it rightly to this this Ethiopia, which he says, according to the ancient, this Toby or Ethiopia was the Ethiopia of the north. And this is a 40-degree shift of the equator. Remember, the equator is right here. Now, you know where Ethiopia is presently on the equator, so we can see how dramatic this shift has been, but the key thing is returning to a northern, a northern position. Now, the only question is, will this happen suddenly? Will this happen, which means great catastrophic effects globally? 
much like what this particular scripture here in Isaiah chapter 24 from verse 1 says. And this explains this right here. Your wine edge, alek esetch. Your wine nigid adekamech. Libacho des yalo hulu tekazu. It says that the new wine mourneth, the, the vine languisheth, all the merry hearted do sigh. Could this have been the last so-called happy new year? Think about it. You understand? I mean, think about it. These are very dramatic things to really get our heads and our hearts, our spirit and our souls right in righteous alignment. You understand with the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, in spirit and in truth. Yeah, kaburo. Yeah, kaburo heshet. Yeah, kaburo heshet. Kar toal. Yeah, destenyo chadint zimbiloal. Yeah, mesenko desita kar toal. The myrrh of the tabret. Ceaseth the noise of them that rejoice endeth the joy of the harp ceases. Then it goes on. It goes on here. Ia zefenuma yewoint edge ayat etutim yemiya sakrima met et yemiya et utamerara yohonal. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drinketh. And here's the key verse we want to touch on right here. Because we're going to have to recharge some of these batteries. So this is a take up from what we was doing before. But verse 10, we think, actually touches on it. And we're going to come forward, y'all willing, with some more on this. But verse 10, where it says, now remember in Revelation, talk about a great city. A great city. You understand there's this great city and how this earthquake is going to split this great city. Here it says that the city of confusion is broken down. Badamaya Honechu. Katama Farasech Bait Hulu Manamindaya Gebabeta Tezegga. Every house is shut up and no man may come in. Now, this could be a FEMA alert, this could be concentration camps, have to take everybody out of the city, so forth and so on. Who knows? But one thing we do know. Things are not going to be the same. Now, this chapter is very, very important because as well as testifying, you understand, and bearing witness to the trouble and tribulation of the time to come, there is also hope for the Tirufan, for the remnant. You understand, for those who answer the call to be chosen and to be faithful to be faithful and to become chosen of the King of Kings and His Christ. So, my brothers and sisters and mothers, once again, Shalom, Aras, Tefari. We're going to come forward and deal with this matter as best as possible. So, stay tuned and once again, in going out, let's check this out and watch and pray. And most of all, brothers and sisters, be prepared. Be prepared and get prepared.